Hey everyone, so in Trieste, on the eastern side, northern eastern side of Italy, just a few kilometers away from Slovenia, uh, very famous, and if, you, if you're a fan of history, then you will have definitely heard of Trieste, but you may not know that there's a company called Sudec, Atmo approved company actually, working uh, with ammonia, uh, chillers and heat pumps, and making a real name for themselves over the last few years. And I'm really happy to have Ivan here, who's second generation of Zudek family, um, together with his colleague, uh, Jakub, who is basically in charge of the business development side of things, right? Exactly. Working all the exciting projects that they have in the pipeline. And, um, you know, next generation that are going to be running the business. And we're, they've agreed today to let me have a tour, let us have a little tour of their production facility. You have about 5,000 square meters, right? Correct. But you're, you've got plans, you're in planning now to double that capacity. Absolutely. And that, that in itself is a message that you, you've clearly got a need for it. You've got demand for these products, right? Yeah. And, and um, so we're going to get to see a little bit how all of these different units, whether that's a heat pump or chiller, including for space cooling, HVAC, that's something that we'll get to see towards the end of the tour. So make sure you watch the video until the end. Um, you know, they're going to show us a little bit of how all these units are assembled and a little bit about the, the secret source of Tudek, right? Um, something that I think is quite powerful in your message is that you're, you're quite a smaller company, right? In terms of the, the size of the company, but you're very innovative, very flexible, very creative, right? We build custom-made products for yeah. the refrigeration market, yes. There's no two products that are the same, right? Absolutely not. So They're all different. That, every dream can come true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, that means that in terms of also the components and suppliers you use, you work with a number of different suppliers, right? Some of them are right. Atmo approved. Some are well known in the industry as well. Um, so you're working with all the major players and then you, you basically design according to the specifications of the end user and mm -hmm. contracts you work with. Correct. Right? We're working, we engineer to order basically. So everything is personal, highly personalized and customized based on the request. This is a family owned business, right? There's about a hundred plus employees, Correct. all with different yes. skill sets, right? Yes. You've, got, you've got a lot of focus on the welders as well because this is a really high skill. And, and especially when you're working with ammonia. And, and ammonia, you've been doing ammonia for a long time, right? 35 years. So th 35 years, yes. only ammonia? Only ammonia. So we haven't done any synthetic application using synthetic refrigerant. We've done only ammonia application using only ammonia as a refrigerant. All right, it's great. Yeah, so, all right. So uh, we're going to get to see some of those, obviously, some of the different units using yeah. ammonia. So, and, and, and there's a big focus on reducing the charge all the time. Absolutely. Right? We work with really low charge yep. because, of course, in Italy, as you know, we have a special regulation that doesn't allow you to use more than 75 kilos of ammonia. So if you want to use more than 75 kilos, you need to undertake special regulations, paperwork, a lot of bureaucracy. So since the beginning, we always be we always been keen and we'll always be focused how to use less and less ammonia. So that was the focus since 1990s. When the company was established, it was established with this vision to deliver sustainable, energy efficient, low charge ammonia units. And guess solutions. what? It's all PFAS free as well. Of course, PFAS free. All right, so this is step one in the production when you start assembling these units, right? So what are we right. seeing behind us? So at the moment, we're seeing the steel. So the steel gets delivered from our suppliers in okay. our workshop. So we get the steel, so raw steel. We get it uh, uh, cut with a water jet, okay. cutter, get it assembled on this desk and start welding together for all the frames. For all the frames for the chillers uh, that are getting built here. Okay. And after that, we walk, uh, we walk along. Uh, we're just building, uh, let's say, galvanized and painted steel for one of our aromatics. Okay. So this, uh, this is the one that we're seeing here at the bottom here. Yeah, right? at the bottom there. So this is one aromatic, a big six module is going to be built here, okay. a megawatt unit. So the steel just returned from our galvanizer and let's say painter, and they are assembling as we speak. Okay. So all the metal sheets get delivered on site. So we have the bending machine on the other side in the corner there. So yep. where we bend them, we make the holes on all the frames. Then the frames get delivered to our, supply, so to our supplier who, who galvanize them and paint them. After that, they get delivered back. We assemble them together. In case of this aromatic, which is a big model, it gets assembled here. On the other case, gets delivered to the other workshop on the other side and gets assembled there. Here. 
So this is a compressor skit. So you have a noise separator underneath, yep. horizontal noise separator, a compressor, a screw compressor on the top, and the electric motor is going to be assembled right at the what far end. What would this typically be used for? Which kind of application would this be for? So this is for an industrial minus 45 application for an ice cream factory in southern part of Italy. Very important ice cream. Yeah, very. <laughs> And good. So, Jakob, yeah, tell us a little bit what we're seeing here because we're in another facility, right? Exactly, another correct. two-deck facility. So we, here we are in the stainless steel facility, stainless steel warehouse. So we, we, we want to make sure that the carbon steel that we saw before is not contaminating the stainless steel. So wh why is that important to separate the two? For, for corrosion reasons. For corrosion, okay. So uh, we are here, so we keep separated the two production facilities. We don't work just as a OME chiller uh, manufacturer and supplier, but we also do uh, the contracting part, especially okay. in Italy, which is our home market. Yep. So we have uh, a lot of uh, stainless steel pipe works, uh, pumping skit in stainless steel, uh, as you can see, stainless steel vessels as well, yep. that we also manu manufacture ourselves. And this happens in this, in this facility that you are seeing here. Okay. So we're now in another part of the production facility. This is where you're doing the all, uh, all the electronics, all right? Yes. yes. So tell us. So this bit. is another important part from Zodiac because everything is down inside, inside our okay. factory. So this is electrical switchboard manufacturing, let's say, place where uh, we have qualified electricians where they build and assemble all the panels. So as you can see from this panel, for instance, this is a panel which has two VSDs, variable speed drives mm -hmm. for two compressors. Another variable speed drive, this is probably for a condenser uh, or something else. And uh, all the basic key switches. And after that, all the panels, the main components get assembled in the cabinets. Okay. And these get transported on the other side of the facility and assembled on air, airmatic, enarmatic, in this case an airmatic, which is the, the previous one that you've seen the frame on the other side. So now we're in the main production facility, right, of Tudek? Yeah, the historical one, the, the historical first one, one that was built in the 90s. Yep. So the smallest one, let's say, yep. where we assemble the airmatics, ecomatics, so the smaller units. And of course, when we prepare all the lines and weld all the uh, carbon steel lines, so ammonia, ammonia lines, ammonia pipes, that are being uh, prepared for then uh, being assembled on the units. Okay. So here you've got different welding stations, right? These are all welding station of the different welders that are uh, uh, welding TIG and MIG uh, for the ammonia, ammonia carbon steel lines. Okay, as you can see, these are all the uh, lines part that has been uh, pre-assembled and weld in the welding positions, and then it will be installed on the, on the chillers once the, the frame uh, of the chiller is ready. The, the quality of our, uh, so of our wealth. Why, why is this important here? This is very important in order to prevent any leakage, any ammonia leakage in the lines of, uh, of the chillers. And I guess to do that kind of welding, it, it requires a lot of experience, yeah. right? All, all our uh, welders are highly experienced and highly skilled and have been working here for quite a long time. So here we, we are seeing an airmatic that okay. is being assembled with uh, its main components, which are the two screw compressors, two uh, electric motors, the oil cooler here, then you have the plate and shell uh, evaporator, the blue one behind, the fans for uh, ammonia condensation, and we are lacking on the walls the micro-channel, aluminum micro-channels for ammonia condensation. So this will be mounted at the end once everything inside is done. So this, again, is an air-cooled ammonia unit Mm -hmm. with no water requirement, no water treatment, pure air condensation, ammonia air condensation that can be used for HVAC and industrial application. And, or you could say packaged? This is a package unit, exactly. Yeah. Everything is being assembled here. Uh, the unit is a plug and play one. We ship it charged with oil and ammonia and the startup takes just two days. So now, so now you've got another unit that's being made here, uh, but this is a heat pump. Correct. So this is a high temperature heat pump. Okay. So we, uh, what, by high temperature, how high do you mean? Well, this one works with 80 degrees, but we reach temperature up to 95 degrees. Okay. So we're teaming up with GA for the compressors. So they're giving us the compressors. Uh, so we assemble the uh, complete skid, so the okay. complete heat pump skid. The important thing is the heat pump is nearly complete, it's nearly finished. So I want to just show you uh, how we're going to test the unit. Sure. So we are, basically, we have the power test facility. Uh -huh. in, in Zudek, which allow us to test all our units, the air cooled chillers and the heat, heat pumps up to nominal capacity and really high ambient temperatures. And that's what we're seeing behind here, right? Yeah, so we're connecting basically uh, cold glyco and warm glyco 
pipes. Okay. We have a dissipation system outside, okay. so we can warm up and cool down the, and test them basically at nominal capacity. So you can test everything before it gets shipped to the customer? This is what we do because we rather prevent a problem yeah. and in case we have an issue we can fix it in Zodek than rather fix it on You've site. Control panel, right? Yeah, control panel. So in this case we have one compressor only with his own VSD. Of course we have uh, the panel with the main components and PLC. Yeah. We're mounting a standard a Siemens PLC with of course the modem so which allows all our units to be remotely controlled and tested let's say all around the world. So this is, an, a, let's say, quite a strong benefit of installing a Zodek unit. This is a unit, uh, the importance of this unit is it has a soundproof enclosure, a cabinet, but the cabinet doesn't act just as a soundproof cabinet, acts, all, acts also uh, like an ammonia compressor room. Okay. So instead of building a building, you have a cabinet, which is built according to EM378, so to a standard, which has a safety ATEX switchboard, yep. which in case we have an ammonia leak, keeps on only the safety devices. We have um, ammonia extraction fan inside so this that. This is like an outdoor machinery room. An outdoor machinery room. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. So you don't need to spend a lot of money in civil works. So you rather put a cabinet outside. You can put it wherever you want on a roof, in a basement, outside, and basically just pipe it, pipe uh, hot water and cold glycol to it. I see that you've got a product ready to leave the Zudek facility for a customer in Switzerland. Right. Uh, but tell us a little bit about this. This is uh, what you call the Airmatic. Yes. What is so special about this product line? Okay, so Mark, thank you very much. So this is the Airmatic, so it's an air-cooled ammonia chiller. So the speciality of the Airmatic is, that air, is of course air-cooled, doesn't use water for a condensing, as it has an extremely low charge of ammonia. So, of course, as you know, all our units are ammonia-based units. Yep. And this has a charge of 37 kilos for a 350 kilowatt cooling. Okay. So, but, but, but this, this product line has existed for a while, right? Correct. It's existing from 2008. So, the first, we were the first, to be honest, to implement the air-cooled technology on ammonia chiller okay. in Europe. Okay. But now, if we... I mean, you, you had this, uh, the, not this specific unit, but a similar unit on display at Chillventer recently. Yeah. Right? And, and, and I guess, what was so special about that? What, what, what was the vision behind this next mm -hmm. market to conquer? So basically, as Ivan said, this unit has been around for more than 15 years now. Yep. Now, what we are trying to do is to adapt to re revise this unit in terms of a more HVAC uh, similar design. So which the first step in that direction was uh, seen at Silventa with the semi-hermetic screw compressor that we mounted there. So, so you that, have Geyer compressor, that, right? In that case, a yeah. Geyer compressor. Uh, so that's the first step in that direction. We would like to make the unit lighter in order to be a bit lighter as other, other HVAC units are because most of them are, being, are going to replace a traditional synthetic refrigerant that are mounted, uh, refrigerant chiller that are mounted on the top of the roof. Okay, so, just to, so, so when you say HVAC, you're talking about natural refrigerants being used for air conditioning, space cooling, exactly, commercial exactly. space cooling. So yeah. this isn't process cooling that nope. we're used to hearing about day in, day out with ammonia. This is space cooling, it's air conditioning, exactly. humans. Air conditioning. HVAC, air, air, air conditioning, uh, 712. This is huge because this is like the big market to take for natural refrigerants. Exactly. And you're, you're basically offering a solution for that today. Yeah, it's already ready. And this it's unit is actually going to be used for air conditioning right correct. behind us, right? Correct. It's going yeah. to Switzerland for air conditioning application. Wow. So exciting times, I would guess, right? There are is tons of potential there, tons of potential for natural refrigerant, not only, especially ammonia is, uh, is our core business. And, and can, you see these, can you see these units getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Or how, what's the vision that you have? 
Uh, take it. Bah, vision. Uh, I think we can. So, in terms of capacity, yeah. a unit like this can reach up to 1.1 megawatts. So, let's say so this one is megawatt. a 1.1 megawatt unit equivalent here. Not this it. one here. This no. one is a 300 kilowatts. So it's a little bit smaller. Kilowatt. But like in the bigger scale of models, okay. let's say you need to add another another couple of meters on the side, okay. you you okay. can reach one megawatt. So one two megawatt. compressors, one megawatt okay. capacity. Yes. Okay, but then you can, I guess this could be modular, right? Yeah. You can have you several can in line. Several units in line. Okay. And the advantage of a megawatt unit, of course, this one, as I said, is 37 kilos. On a megawatt, we still keep a charge that's below 100 kilos of ammonia. So we are planning to reduce the charge significantly more. Wow. You guys are really onto something. Thank you. Mike. Hey, yeah, yeah, all right. Well, yeah, no, this is. Uh, this is towards the end of our tour, and and I, I, you know, this is exciting to see this because this is so. This is really cutting edge. So uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you very much.